if you are writing testnet on 26th of february this is the seventh session in the series of eight sessions that we have planned for aspirants of testnet 2022 so if you are here for the first time you can just subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me and have access to all the other six sessions so these sessions are on varied topics today's topic is important questions from polity if you are a cat 2022 aspirant you can subscribe to our channels pathfinder for me if you are looking for some inputs and strategy related to preparation if you are looking for some content related to quantitative aptitude you can subscribe to our channel mend your map so these are channels which will help you in your preparation let's move on to our first question to whom does the president of india submit his resignation prime minister chief justice of supreme court vice president or himself so the president of india he submits his resignation to the vice president and you should also know whom these important functionaries of the government they submit their resignations to prime minister submits his resignation to the president of india vice president he submits his resignation to the president of india governor also submits his uh, his uh, resignation to the president of india chief justice of supreme court also to the president of india high court or supreme court judge also submit their resignation to the president of india and lok sabha speaker will submit his or her resignation to the deputy speaker and so on next question with which amendment did women get adult suffrage rights now what is suffrage rights here they refer to the right to vote so adult suffrage in india earlier there was no adult suffrage we could vote only at the age of 21 years and this was brought down to 18 years by the 61st amendment to the indian constitution but with which amendment did women get adult suffrage again because for everyone the right to vote the age of right to vote was brought down from 21 to 18 years with the 61st amendment the answer to that question is 61st amendment you know with the 61st amendment but when did women get the right to vote from the beginning of the constitution please understand the difference between these two questions one question is when did women get right to vote from the beginning of the constitution so india is one of the few countries where women have the right to vote since uh, the first day but when did women have the right to vote at the age of 18 it was with the 61st amendment and even men they also had the right to vote at the age of 18 with the 61st amendment only now how can you amend a constitution so there are three ways of amending a constitution by simple majority by special majority and by special majority and ratification of half of the state legislature depending on what needs to be amended so what is simple majority simple majority means more than 50 percent of the members present so here we are only referring to number of members present so if out of the 543 members only 500 members are present or only 400 members are present then simple majority would be 201 the figure of 201 similarly absolute majority it refers to the total membership so if the total membership of the house is 543 then absolute majority would be the number 273 and effective majority means if of the 543 members only 500 are the occupied seats then 251 would be the effective majority similarly amendment to a constitution can also happen by special majority as per article 249 or as per article 268 so article 249 what does it require it requires a majority of two-thirds of the member present and voting so if there are let's say 450 members in a house 
then out of 450 members if two third of this 450 members are present and voting then special majority required as per article 249 would be simply the number uh, two third of 450 so that that is 300 301 similarly special majority according to article 368 requires two third members present and voting supported by more than 50 percent of the total strength of the house then we also have special majority and ratification of more than half of the state legislature now this kind of majority is required when the amendment affects the federal structure of the constitution so if the federal structure of the constitution is being affected then you require special majority and ratification by half of the state legislature next question with which of the following amendment acts sorry which of the following amendment acts deleted right to property from fundamental rights the correct answer here is the 44th amendment so options were 43 44 45 46 the answer is 44th amendment so there were two amendments that affected this right 25th amendment it curtailed reduced in some way restricted the right to property and then 19 uh, in, in 1978 the 44th amendment it deleted right to property as a fundamental right so right to property does not exist as a fundamental right anymore with the implementation of the 44th amendment to the constitution so there have been many amendments to, to the constitution in india uh, the first amendment it abolished zamindari and it was responsible for many land reforms which were necessary at the time of independence then another important amendment was 25th amendment when the fundamental right to property was curtailed i just now told you 42nd amendment of the constitution is also known as mini constitution because of the extensive changes to the constitution that happened as a result of this 42nd constitution so mini constitution 42nd amendment it added most importantly it added the word socialist secular and integrity to the preamble of the constitution so we have a lot of discussion about secularism today these days so the word secular was not the original part of our preamble it was added only via the 42nd amendment in 1976 then we have the 44th amendment and right to property was removed from a list of fundamental rights wide the 44th amendment but one thing is there what are our fundamental rights so our fundamental rights are right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right of freedom of religion cultural and educational rights and most importantly right to constitutional remedies so right to constitutional remedies here refers to the right to have some redressal against any violation of our fundamental rights matlab agar hamara fundamental right violate ho raha hai to hum uske against mein legal action le sakte hain this has been given to us this right has been given to us by right to constitu constitutional remedies then the voting age was reduced from 21 years to 18 years by the 61st amendment to the constitution in 1989 and another very important amendment 73rd amendment was responsible for panchayati raj institutional institutions so they were given a constitutional status through the 73rd amendment in 1992 then there was another amendment 86th amendment what did this, this do this introduced elementary education as a fundamental right which amendment reduced the voting age from 21 years to 18 years we just saw 61st amendment which amendment brought panchayati raj into effect 73rd amendment again we just now saw that the word secular was added to the institute uh, to the indian constitution through which amendment 
42nd amendment which was also called as the mini constitution I just now told you. Then GST was implemented through which amendment act? The answer is 101st amendment. Which of the following railway stations has not been renamed recently? The correct answer is none of these. All of these railway stations have been named in the last one or two years. Patalpani railway station of Madhya Pradesh was renamed as Tatya Bheel railway station. The Mandua Deeh railway station in Varanasi has been renamed as Banaras. I think this was in 2020. Habib Ganj railway station has been renamed as Rani Kamlapati railway station and Jhansi railway station is now Virangana Lakshmi Bai railway station. Rani Kamlapati railway station incidentally is the first railway station in India on PPP model. PPP model means public private partnership model and it is really been developed into a beautiful beautiful station. Next question which article of the Indian constitution guarantees right to practice own religion? The correct answer is article 25. Next question, which app has recently been launched to make parliament proceedings available to the members of parliament and to the general public? So options are Sansad app, e-Sansad, digital Sansad and Sansad TV. The correct answer is digital Sansad app. It was launched in January 2022 only. The app makes it easier for people to follow the proceedings in the parliament. It will also allow people to access archival data related to all the Lok Sabha. And the idea was of Digital Sansad app was given by the Lok Sabha speaker Om Birla. Next question. The first union territory to have a district good governance index. The correct answer is Jammu and Kashmir. So recently the union uh, home minister Amit Shah he virtually received, uh, released the first DGGI, District Good Governance Index. And the first state or the first union territory for which it was introduced is JNK. So the index has been prepared by the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances in collaboration with the government of Jammu and Kashmir. This index is a framework document comprising performance under 10 government sectors and has 58 indicators. The Jammu district topped the composite rankings followed by Doda, Samba, Pulwama and Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir. Next question. In which state has the justice clock recently been inaugurated? Options are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Delhi and UP. The correct answer is Gujarat. So justice clock, what is it? It is a new measure which is introduced by Gujarat government or Gujarat High Court rather to encourage transparency and openness in the court operations. So it's nothing but a 7 feet by 10 feet LED display at the court premises which tells you how many cases are pending, how many cases are registered in a particular day. The first justice clock in India was inaugurated in the state of Odisha. The first one in the state of Odisha. The second one was implemented I think in Calcutta on the high court premises. And this is I think the third one to be implemented. Next question. Who is the head of five member committee that is inquiring into the security lapses during PM's January 5 visit to Punjab. The options are Justice Chandrachur, Ranjan Gogoi, Bhushan Pandey, Indu Malhotra. The correct answer in this case is Indu Malhotra. So she is a former Supreme Court judge and she will be heading the inquiry committee that will look into the alleged security breach and lapse of Punjab uh, of Prime Minister's Punjab visit on 5th of January 2022. Incidentally, Indu Malhotra was the first woman lawyer to be directly elevated from the bar to the Supreme Court judge. And she also has been the second sitting woman judge in the Supreme Court. Next question, the Rajasthan Compulsory Registration of Marriages Amendment Bill. 
which provides for compulsory marriages uh, registration of marriages compulsory registration of marriages it should be including child marriages goes against which of the following acts the correct answer is the sharda act so child Mar marriage restraint act this was passed in 1929 to avoid incidences of child marriage in india and according to this act the girls age for marriage the minimum age for girls was 14 years and the minimum age for boys was 18 years today the minimum age prescribed for girls is 18 years and minimum age for boys is 21 years for marriage now this act was popularly known as the sharda act after its sponsor or its prominent advocate harbilas sharda next question which ministry is to organize an event named mushaira now this event has already been organized so the correct answer here is the ministry of minority affairs obviously mushaira hai it has to be you know it could be under the purview of minority affairs ministry this was organized in february 2021 and the theme of the event was ek bharat shreshth bharat now who is the minority affairs minister mukhtar abbas nakvi next question gerrymandering refers to it refers to redrawing electoral boundaries so many a times a particular government in power would like to redraw boundaries in the election process in order to suit or their own political agenda next the doctrine of severability protects which of the following options are fundamental rights human rights legal rights and right to freedom of speech the correct answer is fundamental rights next question the eighth schedule of indian constitution pertains to options are minorities fundamental rights and duties institutions of higher education official languages in india the correct answer is eighth schedule refers to the official languages of india now there are 22 official languages in india we started out with 14 and over a period of time eight more languages were added to the list of official languages today 22 languages are official languages so sindhi was brought into the eighth schedule as an official language in 21st amendment similarly kashmiri manipuri and nepali they were brought into the eighth schedule by the 71st amendment and bodo maithili and dogri they were bro brought into the eighth schedule by the 92nd amendment in addition to official languages there are six languages in india which have classical status uh, tamil sanskrit kannad telugu malayalam and odia these six languages have classical status next question which right necessitates personal information to be removed from the internet search databases websites or any other public platform the correct answer is right to be forgotten next question who among the following has won 2021 us women open women single title i, I don't know how how this question figured here but in any case the correct answer is emma radukanu kanu so with this we have come to an end of our 7th gk session as i always suggest in case you are liking these sessions please subscribe to pathfinder for me channel for strategic inputs and if you are looking for some quantitative aptitude related content then mend your math just find out mend your math on youtube and subscribe to it that's all for now thank you very much